A good amount of games in the trading card game industry are built on the backbone of intellectual property licensing agreements. And that is quite simply, company A has a very hot IP, but they're not really in the business of making a trading card game. And company B is good at making a trading card game and production of that, but they don't have as much brand recognition or an IP to use. And there's an agreement between these two entities where company B uses company A's intellectual property in making a new TCG and gives them a cut of the revenue and what have you. I'm not sure the whole particulars, but long story short, company A has IP, company B manufactures the game. There's an agreement between the two to use the IP. It's a called a licensing agreement. And that is the backbone of a new TCG, the foundation of where a new TCG is created from. And the point of this video is just to really analyze this and think like, it's really answering the question is, is this a really good way to start a foundation for a trading card game? And is this foundation more geared towards a shorter term lifespan for the TCG that's being created? I don't want to say, is it doomed from the start, but is it really gearing it towards the short term? And also, why aren't these new TCGs that spawn between agreements of two companies, why are they joint ventures instead of licensing agreements? You know, licensing agreement, I feel, is more of like a side hustle type of deal where you're, you know, you're side hustling your IP and loaning it out and you can pull it back at any time and you really have no skin in the game versus joint venture where it shows intent of both companies saying, hey, we think that a new business could form here if we, you know, water that seed and make it grow. So that's really the whole basis of this. And I really want to get into some history now, right? But let me let me give you a little spotty examples here. And I'm not going to give you... <laughs> this is Bronson's abridged version of TCG history. So take everything this with this as a grain of salt. And I'm kind of, you know, choosing, you know, picking things out. And I may jump to certain conclusions, but please correct me if I'm wrong. So... 2017-2018, a game called Netrunner comes out. Doing good. And it might have come out a little bit earlier than that. It was a license agreement between Hasbro and uh, Fantasy Flight Games. And it got really good reception. It was really good gameplay. And I, I personally have never played it, but I've watched a good amount of uh, tournament gameplay. And it's a really good game. It's 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 a it's a very fascinating game and uh, it was getting legs and a lot of people were attending the tournaments, things were hyped. Team Covenant made a good amount of videos about uh, Netrunner. It was doing great, and then all of a sudden, poof, <laughs> news said, "Well, uh, the licensing isn't being renewed. This is done," and it just got rug pulled essentially, like the crypto word, you know, rug pulling. It, it's essentially that. It's the license got pulled from Hasbro from <laughs> Fantasy Flight Games. And it's like, well, game can't be done anymore. And you could draw conclusions like, oh, maybe Hasbro was worried that this was eating a uh, different uh, market share of MTG or, you know, what have you. That That's more of me speculating of this. But long story short, a license arrangement was done. The game lasted three years and then all of a sudden, poof, it was gone. Another great example of this is with Star Wars Destiny. Again, finest of, uh, what is it, Fantasy Flight Games had Star Wars uh, intellectual property that they were using in this game. It did really well. It had extreme market uh, shifts and in investor collector bubbles for a while, I heard. But overall, it wasn't just from speculators and such. It, it was a solid game. I've heard of multiple people out there who um, don't know each other, right? Two specific individuals that I know in my life. And they told me, Bronson, I hate Star Wars, but I fucking love Star Wars Destiny. It, it was that good of a well-developed game. It was definitely a unique game. The game was doing well. Game had torments. Same thing as Netrunner. And then all of a sudden in 2020, doop, we're not going to produce the game anymore. Licensing got pulled. 
And for that one, I don't know if the licensing got pulled exactly, but it definitely seemed like that was the case. Or, you know, definitely it was a licensed agreement between company A and B, and then all of a sudden the game was no more. And if you think about the type of arrangement in that way, it seems very easy or it seems a lot less difficult for an intellectual company, a uh, property company, right? If they have a license agreement to just pull out of that. Literally, you just have an agreement in place, right? You don't have any overhead. You don't have any people. You don't have anyone doing anything really for the game. You literally just have this agreement in place and you're racking up that money <laughs> when the money, you know, the, the distributions come through based off of the agreement. So it makes it very easy to just, you know, get out. Whereas if I think a joint venture was in place, right? And I think the way you do it, you, the way you'd structure it, is that three companies are, are, are preferred, or maybe four, right, to get into this. You could have an, a hot IP company, you could have a game publisher, and then maybe you could have distribution, right? Each owns 33.3% respectively of this joint venture of a new TCG. And I feel like when you have those types of entity, literally you're birthing a new entity out there, right? So for instance, you know, there's uh, Lorcana and, uh, you know, Star Wars Unlimited coming out, right? Those are licensed type of games, right? There's a license agreement between the production uh, or the, the manufacturer of the game and then the uh, holder of the IP. But I think that going a, a better situation for the people out there in, in the communities would be, hey, why aren't we just making a, a, a licensing thing? It, that's too easy to get out of. Why isn't this a, a new joint venture? And I guess when you get to the size of certain entities, when, you know, the revenue is in the, you know, half a billion to a billion, maybe this this little tiny entity doesn't, you know, it's, it's such a little schmidgen on their thing and they don't want to get into that market. But if they don't want to get into that space, then really what are they really doing is my question and I, I think it's more it really conveys to me that this is more of a side hustle and I'm going to be interested to see how different uh, TCGs that are coming out currently are um, just developed over time and, and how well they do but from history and from what we've seen in different TCGs in the past, I'm only listening to, I bet there's a bunch of other ones that you could draw, you know, examples from where there's a licensing agreement and then, you know, TCG goes poof. But it just is odd to me. And if I was getting into any of these new TCGs now, I think the biggest question I'd have for these companies is what type of, <laughs> what type of longevity do you foresee in this type of licensing agreement? And from a consumer standpoint, how do I know that this game is going to stay afloat for so long if the agreement can be just taken back uh, at, at whim, it seems, or maybe once every year? I'm not, I'm not sure how those are structured. Um, and that's not to say that a lot of the new TCGs coming out aren't good games. Uh, I've seen... Lorcana, for example, being played. Do I think that there's power creep and balancing things that could be worked on? Yes, but I feel like the core mechanics are pretty well built, you know, for their target market, which is children ages 6 through 12. Um, the core mechanics are, are good. Uh, Star Wars Unlimited, I haven't played it, but I've heard people say that it is good gameplay. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I tend to believe the, the stories out there. I don't know if it's anything game breaking. Or, or unique and, and crazy, but it definitely sounds like it has some sort of, you know, game there. But to just digress into the whole topic overall, it's if I was a consumer and buyer of these products and I'm buying a huge card pool, buying certain cards, what type of assurance do I have that these games are really in it for the long term? And when the structure of these games are around a license, is it more geared toward a shorter lifespan of the TCG? So 
it's just some food for thought that I was thinking of, and I really would like to hear other people's uh, thoughts on this topic. Um, and, you know, there may be, like, legal ways to justify, like, okay, a license agreement's better than a, a joint venture, but, uh, you know, from what I've seen in, like, different, uh, you know, types of companies out there, when you create another entity and you own shares in that specific entity, it's like you have a invested interest for that new entity to thrive. Whereas if you have a certain licensing thing, you don't really have as much, you know, uh, you know, stake in the production of the TCG. Not only that, but I feel like uh, companies that, uh, you know, loan out their IP, they have to really worry too about the degradation of the intellectual property and the optics of it. And at the first sign of, okay, my IP game, it's fourth set, isn't doing very well. People are kind of, you know, uh, skittish around this. Well, do you, does that uh, company really want to just stick it out the long run and wait like a couple years of, you know, a bearish type of <laughs> negativity over their IP? And maybe that'll degrade the image in people's minds of their intellectual property and do more damage than the incremental revenue that they're being earned. And... That's really what's going on in my mind if you're thinking about it from a very high level and if you're thinking about it from a, a you know, billion dollar company and whatever. It, it, you know, what, what do you have to gain here and really where's your heart at here? So that, that's the video, man. It's a interesting topic. We've seen a lot of TCGs come out recently at, uh, in, the, in the gaming industry. And they are more using hot IP to drive the game. Now, I do want to say as well something that is a positive. It's good because a lot of people are coming into the TCG industry that have never been into trading card games in their life. But they say, hey, I love Star Wars more than anything, and I see that there's a trading card game now. I want to play that. And, ooh, now that I've played that, oh, uh, uh, let's look at Flesh and Blood. Let's look at MTG. These are other games. I like TCGs. I want to play additional ones. So you, you have new people coming into the hobby, but um, alternatively, I think it's, it's interesting when you have these games where I don't know if they're really in it for the very long term. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Cheers, man. Have a good one.